Your film follows the titular character, the elephant queen Athena, as she leads her herd uh, of elephants uh, to find water during a drought. So how did you uh, decide to do this story and follow Athena? As you say, we've lived and worked in East Africa for over 30 years, always living in the wild alongside the animals that we're filming. Um, so really our entire, almost our entire adulthood has been uh, um, totally immersed and surrounded by animals. It wasn't until there was a drought in 2009 um, that we, 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 we saw what the empathy that was within an, el an elephant herd, shown particularly by the females, to what the stress that they were all under. And it just totally intrigued us that these emotions, which were seemingly so human and were the extent to which the elephants would go to, um, to protect each other, to look after each other, to, and how they dealt with that situation, it really made us sort of, it just, it opened up the idea for the story. And how did you find Athena? That took a year and a half. That's a long <laughs> yeah. casting process. A very long casting process. Um, we, we'd started working outside the National Park, and we'd, uh, everything was going fine at the beginning, but then the um, price of ivory rose, and the poaching rose with it. And in that area, the elephants became extremely scared. You, you ju they just weren't behaving in a relaxed manner. We couldn't really get near them. Um, we were found that we were actually sharing water holes with poachers. So um, we decided we had to move um, into the national park. And then we kept looking and looking for the right, the right family. And it wasn't actually until, in fact, I think she really found us rather than us finding her because we came back one day for, to camp, sort of hot and sweaty and at the end of a day. And there was this little group of elephants under a tree behind the kitchen tent area. And... Um, the matriarch just turned her head and she had these amazingly long, even beautiful tusks and a very calm manner and a family with youngsters in it and about the size that we were looking for. And then we just started following and that she became the subject. When, you, when you're first working with animals like that, you have to, in a way, the minute you overstep the barrier of them not wanting you close, you just have to put, stay back a bit and let them get use, used to you and work on that, it's very, it takes a long time sometimes. And um, I think there was one particular time when Mark, who's my partner and who, who we both directed the film and he did all the cinematography, he was, um, the Athena the matriarch, let her daughter, Princess, walk round the other side of the car. And I think Mark felt in that moment that had Princess suddenly called out or got anxious, he was right stuck between um, Athena and the baby. And he didn't really know what the result was, so he, he would be. So he just sat there very calmly to see what would happen. And after a while, um, the baby um, just uh, reacted to the mother's call and just went round the front of the car back to the mother. Oh. And Athena had just stayed completely calm in that stage, had not, uh, had not overreacted. And it was almost, I think Mark felt that he was being tested as if it was, and it was from that day onwards that she really let us be closer and closer. He passed the test. He so, passed yeah. the test. She said, you can film us now. <laughs> yes, exactly. So how close were you able to uh, get to them? Well, it depends in different situations because obviously if you're up in the air, you're never gonna get that close. Mm -hmm. But when we did some filming where we built, we. Um, we created, we built a, a metal box which we sunk under into the ground um, and literally it was about the size of Mark plus a tripod and a camera and it, you'd have ground level shots yeah. which, which would allow you... Which are incredible, you like the ground POV. Yeah. yeah, well we really, because it's not just about the elephants, it's about sort of the whole circle of life around the elephants. So the other smaller characters, not only do they bring the sort of sometimes the humour or a bit of variety to the, f to the, to the emotional story of the film, but they also, we wanted to be down on their level, giving them as much stature as um, the elephants. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of them, you give them all these like, really cute personalities. Mm. Like you, there's like baby geese, and mm. like dung beetles, and killerfish. So how did you decide to anthropomorphize them like that? If we assume as humans that nothing else, no other animal has emotions, mm -hmm. I personally think that's a very 
it removes us from nature, it removes us. Why would we be the only beings with personality, with personality yeah. or with emotions, firstly? And then also, if you live alongside um, elephants like we did for four years and you watch them, you just cannot help but feel that what you see going on between them, and they may not talk, but you can watch their body language, you watch the way they use their trunks, you watch the way they help each other, the way they react, the way they look out for each other. I, I think you, I find it very hard to imagine ever saying that those elephants don't, don't have emotions. So I don't actually think it's anthropomorphic. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's an anthropocentric to think that nothing else, no other living animals have emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like elephants are highly intelligent and very empathetic, and there's mm. a lovely scene in the movie when they're like on their journey and they pause mm. to pay respects to a, a dead elephant, which is yeah. just like a large skull mm. at this point. So, can you talk about that scene and filming that? Yes, I mean, I think I suppose that's the 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 probably the easiest scene in which to to really make that comparison. I mean, it's <laughs> almost as if it's a ceremony yeah. when they are coming across the skull um, and um, tusks of a dead. Um, elephant and the the need to sort of to touch it to pay respect to this was in a ta time of extreme drought when you know nothing else had really distracted them from just surviving and yet there is time to um, you can't I mean mourn is the only word that come comes to mind um, yeah and um, it's it, it's deeply moving yeah, I think and then they, they like wail and yeah it's mm. it's very heartbreaking well in that instance they're actually very quiet yeah. when they wail is in another very emotional scene yes that's in the true film. Yeah. yeah also very sad yeah. <laughs> yeah uh what were the challenges of filming for four years like that that's a very very long time <laughs> I I think the biggest challenge when you're working in the wild like like you're very isolated so you're in a small camp the total number of people was 10 um, about sort of five or six to do with the film and the rest kind of just e helping to back up everything else because we're bringing in everything from water to food. Um, and I think if you imagine just there's nothing that breaks anything what you're d that you're doing. You can't go to the pub. You can't go and watch a film. You can't go and there's nothing y you can do. It's all within this quite small area when you're not out filming. And you can't even go for a walk um, because you in the national parks, you're just not allowed to go for a walk. So I think one of the biggest challenges is actually uh, mentally sustaining um, when, when things aren't going as easily, just keeping both individuals and that a group of people focused and um, yeah, sort of just, just going when there, there is so little external stimulus that you can just rely on or rest on or distract yourself with. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, was the most surprising thing you've learned about elephants over those four years, just observing them? I don't think there is one, w any one thing. I think it's just constant small revelations as you come to terms with or you understand or you see things. Um, I think the horrors of, uh, of what was happening to them, because while we were filming, as I said, there was a rise in, mm -hmm. in poaching. And at one stage, we, we asked ourselves, should we be making, should we actually turn this film to being a film um, about the issues. But luckily for us, Richard Lagkani was making the <laughs> ivory game. And um, so it was like, okay, this is, th this is great. This allows us to tell a story that our, our ambition was to tell a story that would make the world fall in love with elephants because um, without caring, if we don't know why we love and care for something, then you're probably not motivated to, to protect it or to, to want to share your planet with it. Um, but at the same time, to use that film to make a difference on the ground in Kenya and beyond. So around the film, we've got a massive outreach and education program back on the ground where the film is made. And we've already seen, it, it's very difficult, I think, here to imagine the impact that a film like that can have if you're actually living a life where your your life is either either you're in the, the you're living in a city and you don't even really pay any attention to the wildlife that's in your country or you're actually got human wildlife conflict problems to actually understand and get into the mind and the the feel the un, an understanding of of what it is to be an elephant or what it is how how a natural system works um, is is not something that it's with people aren't exposed to to the amount of media 
that, that is here. And so what the film is doing and can do on the ground, along with we're doing 28 um, learn to read books based on characters from the film, and all these things that we're doing around it to support the film, to, lead, to use the film as the kind of lead, leader to changing hearts and minds um, and increasing a deeper understanding back in East Africa. Okay. Uh, what are you working on now? Uh, on doing that last part of it. <laughs> <laughs> now that the film's finished, then we're doing a big launch back in East Africa. 